This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Uh, wherever you are today in Southern California, we welcome you to the show. My name is Ryan Stutz. Always fun to talk about getting to and through retirement with the one and only uh, Logan Sadler. Logan, how you doing? Tell you what, Ron, I'm doing just fine, and I'm looking forward to a great show here. It's been kind of a busy week here, and mm-hmm. certainly that is uh, a good thing. I'd much rather be oh, busy yeah. than not to have anything to do at all, for sure. <laughs> yep. So uh, we have some interesting topics coming up in just a moment here. But first, let me tell everybody how they can get a discovery meeting. That is by calling 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. And by a discovery meeting, what we mean is an opportunity for you to sit down and talk with Logan Sadler, can be just on the phone, could be via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the convenient offices, Hemet and Redlands, the two places. But uh, you can have a conversation with Logan, ask him some questions, get some answers to questions maybe you didn't even know you needed to ask. And uh, in other words, find out a lot of good information. And all of that is not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Got a quote of the week here for you, Logan. I know you will like this one. It's from Frank Clark. I have no idea who Frank Clark is, but what he said makes a lot of sense. (laughs) He said, many folks think they aren't good at earning money when what they don't know is how to use it. That makes sense, (laughs) doesn't it? It really does. And it's funny that how that's kind of positioned a little bit differently than I've heard in the past. But it's true. A lot of us don't struggle making money, right? A lot of us actually have really good gifts, whether it's sales or construction or business owning or or just being a really good employee. A lot of us don't have a problem making money. But what to do with it and how to use it correctly or make it work for us, that's where a lot of people uh, tend to struggle or, or drop the ball in some cases. So that's a great, great quote there. I'm going to take that from him. Yeah, it's very important to use it in the right way. And uh, that's one of the reasons to talk to Logan Sadler to make sure you're efficient in the use of your money. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about folks who need an advisor and maybe some people who don't need an advisor. Not everybody needs one. Other people desperately need a financial advisor. Not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody necessarily understands which bucket they fall into. Uh, I want you to tell us some stories about uh, different types of people that you visited with so that we can start to see which category each one of us falls into. So let's say you have someone who thinks they don't need an advisor. Uh, someone listening to the show today, they're thinking, <laughs> I don't need an advisor, but they really do. What's this person like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people out there where you know, the the main jest of a financial advisor, too, I feel like is very different for a lot of people, right? So I think it, generally a lot of people think of someone that's going to sell them life insurance, right? Or someone that's going to uh, sell them some type of an investment. And it's really interesting, I feel, after people meet with, um, you know, a good financial advisor that's really looking at the financial planning piece, it's very interesting because they find out quickly a lot of the things that they didn't look at in their plan, or maybe some areas that they might have skimmed over. And I've had a lot of clients out there that we've met with, and they've decided to come on board with our firm where they might have been very smart. They might have understood a lot about investments and things like that. But it was interesting because there was a lot of areas of their plan they did not look at, right? I think a lot more of advisors out there, they do a lot more than just sell investments. And I think looking at, you know, what type of uh, conversations you should be happening, happening in your, in your plan, as far as managing emotions, right? I think talking through volatile markets, managing emotions, putting the retirement plan in play, looking at, you know, what type of income you're going to be using, how long the income would last, how are taxes going to factor into your retirement, and really making sure you're using those investments and the tools to help, you know, make that re- uh, retirement plan come to fruition there. But it, it's interesting to me because a lot of the clients we meet with, nobody walks around and says, man, I need an advisor, right? <laughs> um, but a lot of people, what they do is once they really kind of get to work on things, and if they're honest with themselves a lot of the time, they'll see, okay, there is a lot of value out there outside of just the investment plan that an advisor might be able to bring to the table. And I think, uh, you know, what I always explain too with retirement planning is there might be different phases of life where you don't need an advisor, which I'm sure that'll be something we're going to talk about here throughout the segment. But in general, when you look at retirement planning, we always explain it 
going up the mountain, right? Climbing Mount Everest. A lot of us do not need help, uh, or a lot of people do not get hurt actually going up Mount Everest. Uh, much more of the of the percentages of people that fail or get hurt are coming down the mountain. And so we explain that as far as coming down the mountain in retirement is that retirement planning, right? Distribution and things like that. And so that's where I think a lot of people that we've worked with or that have decided to come on board, they have decided to do some things themselves. And all of a sudden when they meet, uh, maybe they met with a few advisors too. And by the time they come in with us and sit down and go over what it is we're going over, they understand that, hey, you know what? This firm is going to be able to put the tools and the planning in place to help guide me down the mountain, so to speak. Okay, so those are people who don't think they need an advisor, but they really do. On the other hand, you got somebody out there who thinks they don't need an advisor, and they're right. Uh, you know, what kind of yeah. person is this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've had I've had some clients where maybe they have a pension. Um, there's no lump sum option, right? And they're, maybe they're single, and there's there's just not a lot of planning there. I mean, basically, you're going to take your pension when you're ready to retire, and then you have Social Security, and you're going to work as long as you can and then take Social Security. There might not be a lot of planning to put in place, right? Maybe that's very, very basic. Um, and again, not saying that's bad. You might still have a very good retirement, but it's just there's not a lot of options. You just basically got to take a payout on your pension when you're ready. And of course, there's some things you should be going over as far as joint or single payouts. And then you got Social Security, but maybe there's not a lot of complexity there. And then there's some other clients out there where maybe they're good planning. I have some clients out there that I've met with or or people that haven't came on board throughout the years, and, and they're actually very savvy, right? When you look at, uh, they're looking at a lot of the broad scope financial planning, and then maybe they have the time to do it themselves. I always tell people that's what a lot of the deciding factors comes down to is, well, you know what, I've, I've maybe I needed a financial advisor, but they probably don't, right? Maybe it's a very basic situation and they have a lot of the building blocks in play to have a good plan and there's not a lot of different options or not a lot of you know things you need to worry about in the plan, so to speak. Well, kind of in a related situation is somebody who thinks they need an advisor. They're convinced that, uh, you know, I've got to get an advisor, but they really don't. I, that sounds like the same kind of person, but someone yeah. who doesn't have as much confidence as that previous person. Yeah, exactly. Some people out there, you know, they, they really, uh, someone really thinks they might need an advisor, but they probably don't. I met, I met with some people, maybe they're younger, Ron, maybe they're 30 years old, right, or 40 years old, and they're just contributing to a 401k, and they don't have any old 401ks, and really, they just probably need to do a little bit of research on their current plans, right, on their current 401k plans. There's also advisors out there you could meet with and, and maybe just get kind of a review of what your assets are in the plan. But a lot of the times you don't need a big complex retirement plan if you're, if you're 30 years old. You don't have any student loans, right? There's not a lot of debt consolidation. There's not uh, saving for college. Maybe you're just starting out for putting money in your 401k. And you know there's a lot of online calculators and things like that that might be able to help you through that beginning stage. But maybe your stage isn't very, very complex. So you don't actually, in my opinion, in some cases, you don't need to pay extra for advice that you might not be might not be getting the value from. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. We're talking about folks who need advisors and maybe some who don't. And if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler about your specific financial situation, remember that number is 888-823-PLAN. That's the number for Regary Financial, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, okay, uh, let's say somebody out there listening to the show today uh, who needs financial planning help but not necessarily investing help. Uh, there are a lot yeah. of folks who fall into that category. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of people out there that understand stocks, they understand bonds, they understand investments, and they might be very good at it. Um, I've seen some clients that uh, in the past where they've spent a lot of time and educated themselves, and they really maybe even enjoy doing it. But when it comes down to it, they still might not have the overall plan, right? Like I always say, uh, an investment plan or a retirement plan should include many different things, not just good investments, right? We also yep. got to be making good and good decisions and good financial planning tactics to make sure that even however good those returns are on those investments, that they're actually being maximized in the right areas and we're looking at all the other things that are going to come up. And I know that I've helped a lot of clients where maybe they just need financial plans. Uh, either come in and they'll go over, you know, hey, Logan, I have the assets. I'm probably pretty good at managing them. And I'll review their performance. I'll review the risk and everything lines up. And then I'll say, but also one of the things we need to look at is, have we factored in, you know, have you looked at any Roth conversions? Have you looked at taxes? Have you looked at qualified charitable distributions? Have you looked at any type of life insurance or annuities as far as income planning, right? Um, have we looked at the estate plan? And we start kind of going through all this other stuff. And then they go, 
well, you know what, I've done a good job of making money, but I might not be situated correctly to distribute it, right? To go down the mountain, so to speak. And so that's typically where a lot of, lot more of our clients tend to need more of the investment help in some cases, but also really a lot of that financial planning. To me, that could really make a big difference because we have no idea what the market's going to do tomorrow, right? We, we yeah. all could think we do, but at the end of the day, investment returns can come and go in decades, right? So I think the biggest thing to look at is, is there any financial planning? right? Are my beneficiaries listed correctly? Do I have a trust? Am I looking at taxes? Can I be putting myself in a better situation now to be more tax efficient later, right? So a lot of those other things I think are a lot more of the planning topics that we tend to focus on to make sure that we're, we're putting ourselves you know, in the best situation for retirement. I'm sure there's somebody out there listening to the show today who falls into this category, uh, someone who needs investment help, but not necessarily financial planning help at this time. Is this likely to be somebody like you talked about earlier who is younger? Yeah, absolutely. That could definitely be someone who's in the younger phases there. Maybe they uh, they don't need really investing help, but they're looking more of the overall financial plan. Maybe um, there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there that kind of go back and forth. Ron, like you said, I've seen it all over the place. Where some people need help with investing, uh, maybe they have that covered, or some people are very good and methodical about the plan. They understand. Well, no, I could put this piece here, or draw income from here, or do this there, delay this Social Security till there. Right, a couple of those instances. But you know, in general, just speaking, there there can be some younger or older people that might fall into that category, and I think there. There's, there's a lot of people out there who might not need a financial advisor, just depending on how educated and how much time you're willing to put towards it. Because I'll, I'll be honest, right? I wouldn't have a full-time job <laughs> if, it, if it wasn't something that took a lot of time. Yeah. And one other uh, thing here, and uh, this, is, this is where a lot of folks out there listening today may need to call you. There are people who desperately need help with everything. And that's where you come in because you take a comprehensive approach to the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. Like you said, there's a lot of people out there. Many of you listening to the show right now, you might be in a situation where maybe you're 55 years old, 60 years old, 65 years old, and you're getting closer and closer to retirement. And you're realizing, you know what? I've done a good job of maybe making money. Maybe I've saved well and put myself in a good situation, which a lot of our clients have, Ron. A lot of our clients that, uh, or a lot of our listeners too, listening to the show, maybe you put yourself in a great situation and you've saved well. Maybe you have three hundred thousand dollars. Maybe you got three million dollars, right? Depending on your situation. But at the end of the day, you're looking for a way to make sure that you're in the best situation possible, making sure that you're able to get a retirement plan put together that's going to be able to last you, you know, not only to, but also through retirement. And a lot of you out there are concerned with, am I saving enough money, right? Am I going to run out of money in retirement? How much income could I potentially get in retirement? How long would it last? Taxes, how are taxes going to factor in? Medicare, right? all these confusing topics that can sometimes come up in a retirement plan. That's where a good financial advisor to me can really show the value in being able to assist you and uh, getting all of those things covered in your financial plan. And that, like you said, Ron, is exactly what our firm does. We've been around for a long time now, decades, helping people plan and prepare to get to and through retirement. And uh, the best part about we do the radio show, we have the YouTube channel, all other ways for you guys to get information and uh, education out there. But also for those of you, like I said, maybe you plan well, or maybe you've saved well and got yourself in a good situation, but you're looking for some ways out there maybe to maximize your situation and looking for a financial advisor and a team to really help guide you into this next phase and help not only get you up Mount Everest, but also get you down Mount Everest uh, throughout your retirement plan. Definitely think it'd be worthwhile to give us a call and come in for that discovery meeting. At that discovery meeting, we take really a deep dive into your situation, what it is you're trying to do. We could also tell you a little bit more about our firm and what our what our clients typically look like and what areas we can help you in. And again, just see if we're a good fit to maybe work together and uh, go over your situation. But it all starts at that discovery meeting. And Ron's going to give you the number here to uh, go ahead and make that call. Okay, here's the number, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. Call that number today. Leave a message with your name and phone number, and you'll get a call back first part of the week and arrange a time for you to have a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. That's exactly right. You're going to talk to the same guy who's on this show that you hear every week, 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler is his name. He's the vice president and chief investment officer at Regary Financial, a firm that's been around forever in Southern California, two offices, Hammett and also Redlands. And we appreciate your listening to the show today. One more time before we take a quick break here, 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for a discovery meeting. It can happen, but all you have to do is to reach out with a phone call. I'm Ron Stutz. He's Logan Sadler. We'll be right back with more on the Financial Beat after this. 
Are you worried about how taxes might impact your retirement savings? Don't let taxes derail your financial future. Download Logan Sadler's 2023 Guide to Tax Planning and learn how to optimize your Social Security, retirement savings, and investments. With expert advice, the latest tax laws, and strategies for tax optimization, you'll be on the path to maximizing your retirement savings. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and start taking control of your financial future. Just text ADVICE to 21000 and download your free copy of the 2023 edition Guide to Tax Planning. Welcome back to the Financial Beat. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Logan Sadler works with three different generations of some of the client families at Regary. Many of those clients have been with the firm for more than 25 years. A lot of new folks coming on all the time. Get a lot of phone calls because of this radio show. A lot of folks uh, listening to the show, but also checking out uh, Logan on YouTube and uh, also the podcasts that are available. Uh, Logan, take a moment, if you would, and explain to folks how they can get all of that information other than what they get right here on this show. Yeah, you can head over to the Financial Beat YouTube channel and, uh, again, type in the Financial Beat on YouTube, and it'll take you right to our page there. And uh, we have a lot of different videos on there, I I think over 100 up there with different podcasts and YouTube videos that are on that channel. And uh, each of the YouTube videos that's on there, they're short educational films on uh, on basically what it is you're trying to look at, right? There's a lot on there is, you know, understanding your risk in retirement. What are some things you should understand about annuities in retirement? And also taxes and a lot of that stuff that a lot of you guys out there have questions on. You can head over to the YouTube channel, type that in and get some more information and hear kind of some of our takes on some of that information. And again, you type in the Financial Beat on YouTube as well as you can head over to podcast and type in the Financial Beat and it'll take you to our podcast page. And you, again, that might be Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to podcasts. And you can get, uh, again, longer forms like this of the podcast you could check out. And again, there's I think there's over 100 podcasts now, Ron, that we've done yeah. that you could actually go on there and check out at your convenience. And again, a lot of good information that might pertain to you. One of the videos on YouTube that I found particularly interesting is you have one that's called something like, How Much Should I Have Saved by Age 60? Something like that. That's a really yeah. interesting, I thought. Yeah, exactly. We've been trying to kind of make fun questions, right? Because a lot of you guys have been asking us questions on the on the YouTube channel or even on the on the podcast and things like that. And yeah, that was one of our viewer questions we brought there with how much should you have saved by age 60? And yeah, a lot of you guys have been checking that out and liking that. And uh, there's a lot more good content like that to follow. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, uh, if you want to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. Once again, that is your number to call, and you can make it happen. He will take a deep dive into your financial situation. It's not going to cost you anything at all. You're just going to have a conversation. It really will be uh, really very helpful for you and very informative. Uh, Sometimes people will justify a purchase they make by calling it an investment, even though the purchase doesn't really qualify as an investment. (laughs) For uh, each of the following statements that I'm about to make here, uh, tell us about a person that you've seen make a similar comment and whether you consider that purchase to actually be an investment or Mm -hmm. perhaps no. All right. I'm sure that you've had folks say these things to you. So I'm sure (laughs) I have a long commute to work and I need a reliable vehicle. So I decided that it's a good investment to spend a little more on a nice car. Would you consider that an investment? Yeah, you know what's funny about that one is, yes, it, it could be considered an, an investment, so to speak, right? An investment in yourself, an investment so that way you can get to work, right? The car is what gets you to work, which makes you the money. Um, I could definitely see that side of things. Now, if you said, hey, you know what? I spent a little extra money and I bought myself a hybrid you know, Toyota Corolla or Camry or whatever it is, and it got really, really good gas mileage because I have a long commute, uh, and I spent a little more to get something that was more gas efficient, right? That would be like, well you know what, maybe that was a better investment. Maybe you'll get a better return on that over time. Yeah. And I could definitely see that argument, right, as far as, okay, well, what did it make sense? Now, here's where I've seen other people say that exact same thing and it not being an investment, right, where they've said, you know what, Logan, I ended up having to buy a car because I have a long commute to work, and I spent a little bit more just because I wanted something a little bit nicer to get me there. So I got this new V8 Mustang, right? And uh, <laughs> and it's like, well, I don't know if that was an investment, right, because you're probably spending more money in gas than you were in your older car, and so you're probably losing money each month, right, due to gas. So, you know, it can go one of both ways. But I think, you know, obviously you got to have a car to get to work. Um, Do you need a BMW to get to work? Probably not, right? So it's one of those things where it just kind of depends on how you're justifying it. But I definitely think 
a good commuting car for for those of us out there that commute, which I commuted for many many years, and it's it's uh, I know it could be taxing on the body, but also on the on the pocketbook. So you want to make sure you're getting something that's efficient and reliable uh, to get you to work. Well, that guy who bought the Mustang is probably somebody who just wanted to have more fun while he was stuck in the car for so yeah. long. You know, what do you mean, Ron? No, it was an investment, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. like, well, I don't know. I don't know if that V8, uh, you know, with the supercharged and all that stuff you needed on it was was an investment. Got but it. hey, <laughs> you're going to end up spending a lot more more money on gas. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Logan, here's another situation. If somebody says to you, we found a piece of land in the mountains that's for sale at what seems to be a really good price. We might buy it and eventually build on it. Or maybe we'll just hold on to it as an investment. What do you think of that logic? Yeah, you know, that's another one where it can kind of go both ways. I'll, I'll share a little quick story here where I've had people that thought they were buying land as an investment, right? And uh, uh, I had one client where I don't know where it was at. It was this little, little, little neck of the woods out in Florida somewhere, not one of the booming areas. Yeah. They bought way in the outskirts, and she paid like, I don't know, $20,000 for this piece of land. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were going to build some build a house out there or retire out there or do something out there. And they never really did. And all of a sudden, like 15 years later, I asked her to get an appraisal on it, you know, because she was talking about as far as she wanted to sell it and then see what it was worth. And so I said, well, I mean, yes, you could just start with an appraisal and see what things would be worth out that way. Yeah. And it was funny. It was worth like 17000 right? So it appreciated like $3,000 or whatever in like 15 years. <laughs> and, and it was one of those because she just, again, nothing ever expanded out that way. Nothing ever grew out there. She was miles and miles away from anything. So it was one of those things where obviously I think holding something 15 years and making $2,000 or $3,000 probably isn't, isn't the best investment out there, right? So yeah. I've seen that happen many, many times um, that way. Um, and not to mention the expenses and taxes and stuff like she paid on that. You could definitely argue she lost money, right? But there's also other people out there where it's like, I have some clients that are going to retire out in like the June Lake area, right? So they bought some land out there about five years ago. Um, they kind of start, they haven't started building anything yet, but they actually got plans to start next year. And that's going to be where they're going to relocate to, right? It's one of those things where it's going to be a really good investment for them because they're going to be able to downsize, build the house they want and do everything basically all cash because they bought the house, the land years ago, were able to pay it off, selling their house out here in Southern California, moving out that way. Yeah. So that's going to be a great, great investment, right? It's one of those things where that will work out. Um, you just want to kind of make sure when you're buying land and things like that, looking at the geographic location, what's out there, what's by there, is that somewhere you actually can see yourself living or is that an area where other people can see themselves living? And uh, that's that would you know obviously make for the best investment out that way. Um, so there's a lot of things you want to consider, but buying land can definitely be an investment, but you just kind of want to make sure what, what's the purpose of doing it and what is the likelihood of that of that investment working out. You may have had some casual conversations with people at a party or maybe some guy you met at the gym or or whatever the case may be. And he says, Logan, listen, I know that uh, you're a financial advisor and uh, maybe I need to come see you. But let me just tell you what I'm what I'm doing. This stock seems to be rising quickly. I'm investing in 100 shares of this stock so I can hopefully make a quick buck and then sell later on this year to pay for a nice vacation. (laughs) What do you think of that line of thinking? Yeah, I mean, we all would do that, right? That that just sounds real simple. If it would um, work, yeah. If it would work, right? That's the problem. We don't know, right? And I think the biggest thing with investing is I think a lot of people come at it the wrong way. They think it's somewhere you just throw some money at it and, ho- and it's going to stick and make some money and you just take it out and everything's sunshine and rainbows, right? The problem with investing is is we don't know what stocks are going to do do what. And the biggest thing is a lot of the stocks, I you know, when you look at the S&P or any types of stocks out there for the most part, a lot of them can be very, very volatile short term. Yep. And so a lot of the things when you're investing in the market, you want to be looking at a one year, two year, three year, probably more like a three to five year time frame before if you're putting money in there before you probably ever need that money back, right? Just because the the market can be so volatile. And I think it's funny because a lot of people out there had that experience with cryptocurrencies a few years back, right? Yeah. That was where, you know what, I, I don't really think it's going to be worth much, but what I'll do is I'll just going to go ahead and put some money in there. That way I can make a little bit and then I'm going to go on a vacation or pay my house off or do whatever they were going to do with it. And uh, that didn't work out for a lot of people, right? So I think it's one of those things when investing, you've got to always understand the, understand the risk that comes along with the investments you're putting money into and making sure you're investing for the right reason. Getting qu- uh, rich quick, as we always talked about, it just sounds so nice, right? Rich quick. Well, that sounds great. But the problem is that's not how investing typically works, right? It's not like you're winning the lotto. It's a slow and steady grind. Typically, over a three to five year time frame, maybe even a decade long is where you'll see the best returns. And uh, it's important to understand that things can be volatile in the short term. 
So if you have a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars, right, and you're trying to put money away and you're trying to invest it, I think the biggest thing out there, Ron, is to making sure you understand what the goal of that is, right? What types of investments you're using? Are you going to be diversified? What's the uh, long-term success of this? And also, what's the short-term risk of this, right? So I think a lot of those things are very important. And that's part of what I think always separates our firm out there is we're not one of those people out there that's just trying to sell you an investment. We're not trying to just try to say, hey, you know, if we do this, everything's going to be great. What we're trying to show people and what we're trying to do is to, to bring value to a lot of our clients is, you know, understanding what your goals are, what your dreams are, and what your concerns are. Are. And building out that full retirement plan to, yes, we do the investment side. We got to look at the tax piece, the estate planning piece, all these other things that are going to factor in. And we have access to all the all the great investments out there, right? I mean, different stocks, management companies, mutual funds, you know, ETFs, uh, you know, insurance products, all that stuff could be very important. But understanding what your goal is with those investments and also what the risk is, I feel is the best way to help kind of put that round that puzzle out, right? And making sure that we don't get caught in those situations where we were just trying to get rich quick. Yeah, I, a lot of people out there have been listening to this show today and thinking, you know, gosh, I fall into one of these categories or whatever the case may be. And mm -hmm. you may want to have a conversation with Logan Sather. And if you'd like to uh, talk to Logan, uh, I'm going to give you the number just a second here. But uh, you can get a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. It's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. But what kind of things are you going to talk about when you first meet someone? Yeah, you know, the best part about our discovery process is we're not one of those firms where we bring you in here or we lock the door, shut the lights off type of thing, turn the lamp on, <laughs> right? The interrogation tactic. Right. That's not what we do. We, we like to have a really thought out process. And again, we've been doing this for a long time. We're not a new firm. We've been around for a long time. And what we do, Ron, is we really sit down either via Zoom or, or in person, and we'll take a deep dive into what it is you're trying to accomplish. Because a lot of you guys out there, and again, most of our clients are typically approaching retirement. Maybe you're 55, maybe you're 65, or somewhere in that age range. And you're concerned with, you know, do I have enough money to last the rest of my life? How are taxes going to factor into my retirement plan? Or, you know what, did I save enough money? What, what is my income going to look like? And what could I be doing different now to maybe better myself over the next few years? And so we kind of sit down and figure out what are the, what, what's one of those things is keeping you up at night and what type of plan would be put in place to help best suit you and your family. And it really, it all starts the discovery meeting where we just kind of get to know each other. You get to understand a little bit more about our firm. We'll tell you a little bit about, about more about our process, about our beliefs. And then we want to understand a whole lot more about what it is you're trying to achieve and, and making sure that we're the right fit for you and help guide you through our process. And it all starts the discovery meeting. And like I always say, by coming in for that meeting, I, I can't guarantee a lot in the business, but I can guarantee you'll walk away with some sort of value and uh, probably want to come back in for that second meeting as well. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. That is your number to call if you'd like a discovery meeting. It's all about creating those income streams in retirement so you can have the kind of lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Nobody wants to run out of money uh, while they're still on this planet. And uh, that is a big concern for so many folks who lie awake at night worried about outliving their money. Don't let that happen to you. Call Logan Sadler. Get a conversation going about your particular situation. He can give you much more specific advice as it applies to your particular scenario than he can give you on the radio show because, you know, we're talking in general terms on the radio show. We don't know what your specific situation is. The number to call if you'd like a discovery meeting, you get to know him, he gets to know you. There's no salesmanship involved, none of that. 888-823-7526. That is 888-823-PLAN. Logan Sadler, VP, Chief Investment Officer, Regary Financial, serving you in Southern California. We'll be right back in just a moment. Hi, I'm a soon-to-be retired mom. I'm also a grandmother, and as much as I enjoy visiting with my grandchildren, I'd like to be able to head home at the end of the weekend. I also want to make sure that they get a top-notch education one day. And of course, I want to look out for myself as well. With the proper financial plan in place, I can accomplish all of those goals. What about you? What are you doing to prepare for retirement? Make sure your family is cared for in retirement. And please, don't turn your weekend family visits into a permanent vacation. In Southern California, call Logan Sadler and the Regary Financial Team at 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. 
We're back now with more of the Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know. Hey, the number to call if you'd like to have a one-on-one conversation with Logan Sadler, uh, maybe on the telephone, uh, more likely via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the convenient offices. Uh, There's one in Hammett and one in Redlands. You can have your conversation with Logan Sadler for absolutely free, no strings attached. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. Remember that uh, at McGarry Financial, they have great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, and Medicare specialists as well to help offer you well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. It's not just about investments or this or that. It's about the whole picture. And uh, Logan Sadler takes a look at all of that. You can get a discovery meeting at no cost. Again, that number, 888-823-PLAN. And a history lesson here for you, Logan. 45 years ago, April 16th, 1978, the Blues Brothers made their very first appearance (laughs) on Saturday Night Live. And, of course, they got to be incredibly popular and you know, a couple of Blues Brothers movies, and yeah. wow, that's a pretty monumental date in my book. Yeah, it is amazing how sometimes wheels uh, could be set in motion like that, right? I mean, it was started out as kind of a skit and then turned into some movies, and then uh, are all this time later, and it's 45 years later, and it's still being talked about, right? So I'd say it was a success. I remember uh, watching both the Blues Brothers movies, uh, the first one with uh, John Belushi, who wasn't around for the second one, and they got John Goodman to... Uh, play his part, but uh, Dan Aykroyd and both of those, and uh, really a lot of good music. That's uh, the main thing I liked about it, but uh, really incredibly popular thing that sprang right out of this idea that somebody had, you know, on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. One of the yeah. writers came <laughs> up with it, I guess. So, it's yeah, it's, cool. it's been a while since I've watched those. I mean, maybe ten years, maybe fifteen years plus. So I'd have to, I have to go back and rewatch those because they were some good movies. Yeah, exactly. With with really great music. So yes, hey, let's talk about IRAs. And mm-hmm. there are people who ask questions all the time about IRAs. And so let's call this segment of our show IRA frequently asked questions address some of the frequently asked questions that people have about these things. Sometimes people ask, what kind of return can I expect in an IRA? Why is this an impossible to answer question? Yeah, so I'm glad you said that at the end there, Um, (laughs) because it is, right? (laughs) Um, But I get this a lot. I was actually on a call with a potential client last night, right? And uh, they were like, well, if I move, if I do this or do that, what's the the potential return on on a 401k or or whatnot, right? Or an IRA? And it's funny because it, it is a hard question to ask. And the main reason is, is because it really depends on where your IRA is invested or how it's invested, I should say. And uh, that's because an IRA, can, an individual retirement account, can be invested in stocks, could be invested in bonds, could be invested in mutual funds, exchange traded funds, ETFs. Um, uh, CDs, money markets, annuities, right? I, uh, real estate, I keep going on and on for, for, for a while there. It could basically be invested in whatever it is you choose to invest in, or if you have an advisor, wherever the advisor invests it. And that would have a huge fluctuation on what the potential return is, right? So it's more of, if you, if you have an IRA, it, what type of an investment should you have it in? And then again, not necessarily focused on return, but more focused on what is your risk tolerance and what is your time frame for needing the money, right? If you're putting money in an IRA and you're older and maybe you need the money, maybe you're 55 and you're going to take the money out in 60, you only got five years, right? So maybe you should be more conservative with that investment because you don't want it to fluctuate a whole lot on the downside. Uh, but a lot of you out there that are starting an IRA, maybe you're 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, maybe hopefully younger, maybe 20, and uh, you're putting money in IRAs, you understand that there's going to be a longer time frame before you're going to need that money. So you might be okay going a little bit more aggressive with it, knowing it's probably going to have a better rate of return over a longer period of time, right? So I think a lot more of that needs to be asked rather than just what the return should be, because it really depends on where you put the money, because that is a big confusing thing out there. An IRA is not an investment type, right? It's an account type. The investment could be anything, right? It could be an IRA or it could be a, sorry, it could be an annuity, it could be a CD, stocks, bonds, and all that stuff. So that's why that question could be very hard to answer. Yeah, for sure. Uh, most people don't know if they should be contributing to a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. How do you help people make that decision? 
Yeah, it, it really comes down to number one, what is your income? Because again, you uh, there's income limits for Roth IRAs and deductible IRA contributions, which I have some video YouTube videos and things like that on there for those of you that want a little bit of a deeper dive on those. Um, but you know, main, the main thing, the main difference I'd say, Ron, of what the deciding factor is, is are we thinking that your tax rate would be higher in retirement? Maybe you're a higher income individual and uh, you're saving money. And the big difference is obviously one of them, you're paying taxes now, which would be the Roth IRA. You're paying taxes based off current rates and it grows 100% tax-free. And when you withdraw it in retirement, you don't pay any taxes as long as you follow all of the Roth IRA rules. Mm -hmm. The other one is a traditional IRA, meaning you, you're not paying any taxes and you get the tax break now. But unfortunately, when you withdraw it, it could be all taxable, right? So or it will be all taxable, I should say. And so um, that's a lot of the deciding factors. A lot of our clients that maybe have a pension or a Social Security or they're starting very young, the chances of them having a very high account balance down the road 10 years from now, 30 years from now, uh, is very high. So the chances of their income being higher in retirement are, is, a, is a good chance. So why not have that money or even a portion of it come out tax-free? So I think a lot of us that are you know, maybe younger and starting out, uh, the Roth IRA might be a good way to go, especially if we're thinking that tax rates are either going to be higher in the future or that you might be in a higher tax bracket. And uh, the, the traditional IRA is really good to give you a little bit of a tax deduction now. So some of us that might be in some tax trouble now, and maybe you're going to have a severe dip in income in retirement. Maybe you're making lots of money right now, but in retirement, you're going to take a severe pay cut. Then maybe it's okay to have uh, higher taxes in retirement because you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. So you could have more tax deferred money. So some of those conversations that we have with some of our clients and, and just trying to guide them the best, either one of them is a great investment or it could be a great investment for you. But definitely, Definitely, I think there's some, some more uh, due diligence that could be done on what one might be the best for you. Well, let's uh, get a little more specific about Roths. When is a Roth conversion a good idea? And what should people listening to this show consider before doing that? Yeah, that's another great question. These are awesome here. Um, a lot of us out there, again, a lot of people we work with, they already have assets, right? Maybe they have an old 401k with 500000 in it, or they have an old IRA with maybe a million dollars in it, or $200,000, or whatever the amount is. The biggest thing for a lot of you out there um, is if we have an old 401k or uh, an IRA, and if you're o or if you're over the age of 59 and a half, you could be eligible for what's called a Roth conversion. Now, what that means is you could take money from a tax deferred account, meaning you haven't paid any tax on it, so a 401k or an IRA. You could take money from that, and you could actually convert uh, all of it or portions of it over to a Roth IRA. So essentially, you'd be paying taxes on the conversion now to let that money grow tax free, and uh, so that's a good. That's basically what a conversion is: is to basically move money out of taxable accounts into tax free accounts over a period of time or all at once, depending on your situation. And the reason why you might want to consider that, Ron, is a lot of us out there. Again, maybe you're going into retirement and you have a million dollar IRA, right? Well, the problem with that is it's obviously a good problem to have, but the problem is all of that's taxable, right? So as you're withdrawing income in retirement, if you're going to take, let's say, $40,000 a year or $50,000 a year out of that account, that's going to be all taxable income paired with your Social Security, maybe a pension or your wife's pension or whatever it is. So now you have all taxable income coming in. So what you could do with the Roth conversion is potentially move portions of it out. We call it filling up the bucket. Maybe you're in the 22% tax bracket. You can move portions of that out in the 22% tax bracket, pay taxes on it now, and then reinvest the money and have it grow 100% tax-free um, if you follow the Roth IRA rules. And basically, it's a great way to get money out of taxable accounts into tax-free accounts. And it's really good for a lot of us where, again, our, our tax rates are going to continuously be a problem in retirement. And we're worried about if taxes go up, that it might have an even bigger impact on your retirement, right? Because the way I always explain it, Ron, is uh, Uncle Sam is a partner on your 401k oh, right? exactly. or your IRA, right? He's, got <laughs> He's got the silent up. partner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if you got a million dollars, you might owe 40% of that or you know 37% of that to Uncle Sam. You might owe 22% of that on whatever your tax bracket is. So he always owns a portion. And the problem is, as that account balance keeps going, they continuously own the upside of that, right? So it's nice to be able to utilize a Roth IRA with Roth conversions. Uh, for some of us out there that are trying to get some more tax control, 
as well, some of us have heard of required minimum distributions, meaning when you turn 73, you'll have to start taking money out of your taxable accounts and paying taxes on it each year. The nice part about it is the Roth IRAs you don't. So by doing the Roth conversions, it could also eliminate those RMDs down the road or lower them um, and give you some tax-free money and also tax-free to the kids. So there's a lot of advantages that could be there uh, if it's in the right situation of the client to do the Roth conversions. This is Ron Stutz having my usual conversation with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, uh, 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan about your individual financial situation. We'll pass along that number again coming up in just a few moments. Continuing now with the financial beat, Logan, how can someone know if they should roll over from their 401k into an IRA? That's another, man, these are uh, these are all great questions. Oh, I'm just full of them today. <laughs> You're full of it today. You're on fire. <laughs> um, you know, the biggest thing I would say, Ron, is looking at your situation. Most of us have a 401k out there and you're in a Target 2028 fund or 2030 fund or 2050 fund, whatever it is. And a lot of us don't really even understand what it's invested in. And the problem with some 401ks is they're really great while you're working there, right? While you're working there, you're getting the employer match. You're putting money in tax, uh, a payroll deduct. So it's just very uh, simple, very easy, and they can be a great investment. Again, most of the clients that I deal with, they've accumulated a lot of their wealth in their 401ks and IRAs. So they're not a bad investment by any means. But the problem is when you're no longer working there, so when it's an old 401k or you've retired or you're over the age of 59 and a half, you're now eligible to do what's called their IRA rollover. So you could roll your money from a 401k to an IRA. There's some big advantages there and some also some small disadvantages you got to look at as well. The big advantages are um, being able to have access to many more different funds, right? Now in the, in the 401k, you only have access to maybe 10 or 15 different mutual funds. But now when you look at the IRA, you could roll it over, you have annuities, you got stocks, you got mutual funds, you got bonds, you might have real estate, as well as you could work with an advisor like us or someone like us where they're able to help maybe manage it and give you a little bit more customized options. And what I always say is you kind of open the door to a whole new world of investments, right? So you could typically get a lot more customized outside the 401k, as well as you might be able to cut costs or cut fees or, or just have a little more control over it overall, but also it allows you to maybe do some tax planning. Like we talked about Roth conversions, things like that outside the 401k. So there could be a lot of advantages out there. And I always tell people, if you're over the age 59 and a half, if you're listening to the show, if you're over the age of 59 and a half, or you have old 401ks or IRAs, I would highly consider reaching out to an advisor and, and kind of, again, getting together a full plan, but also talking about, could you be doing something better with your old 401k or current 401k if you're over the age of 59 and a half and getting things more customized and geared towards your goals and your retirement plan to maybe be better situated for that upcoming retirement. We're talking about IRAs and um, all of that, um, all of the information that you need to know around those. And of course, you can get a, a, a bigger look, a closer look at IRAs by just having a conversation with Logan Sadler yourself and asking your own questions. But, you know, a lot of things change over time. And I know it's part of your job to keep up to date with all these changes. What fairly recent changes to IRAs should people know about as a result of the SECURE Act in 2020 and then the SECURE Act 2.0 that was passed this year? Yeah, that's a great question, Ron. Again, you're on fire today. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I would say is like the, the original one, I think, that passed in 2020, the biggest thing I think that actually had an effect was the uh, stretch IRA. So a lot of us out there used to be able to do, if you passed away and you inherited a non-spouse IRA, so maybe, meaning you're maybe a child and you inherited your parents' IRA, you used to be able to say, well, you know what, I'm going to take small distributions out um, of this account per the IRS, and it's going to stretch that IRA out for the rest of my life, right? So Example, if I inherited $100,000, I would be able to inherit that and take a small distribution each year and pay taxes on the distribution, but just a small one each year and now use that money for my retirement, right? The remaining 100000 or whatever the whatever the amount was and use that for my retirement and stretch out the taxes. Well, in uh, the SECURE Act, the original one, what they did impose was the 10-year rule. So after, uh, if you're, again, non-spouse, so if you're a son, daughter, or family member, or whoever it is, and you inherit the $100,000, now you have to take 
that hundred thousand dollars out over ten years, yeah. and it has to be exhausted. And you know, obviously, if that hundred thousand is in a traditional account, you have to pay taxes on the distribution. But you only have ten years now to take it out. So for some of us out there inheriting uh, millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever the amount is, it could have a big tax consequence on how you take that money out. And now instead of having a lifetime, we might only have ten years to be efficient and uh, look at the tax impact. So that was a big one that was imposed, Ron. And then the next one I'd say off the Secure Act 2.0, another big one was they moved the RMD. So for those of you that are out there that are listening, that are approaching maybe you're 68 years old, 70 years old, 72 years old, you used to be have to have to take off your 401ks or IRAs or any, any type of qualified account. You know, when you're retired, you would have to take a distribution out each year. Originally, it was 70 and then the original, or 70 and a half, then the uh, Secure Act pushed that to 72, and now the Secure Act 2.0 has actually pushed that to 73. And for those of you that are younger, maybe even all the way up to 75. So it's done a great job, in my opinion, on that side to be able to to maybe delay some of those distributions. The main reason why is because of tax implications, right? So um, there's a lot of lot to unpack there. Unfortunately, Ron, I could talk about the Secure. And the Secure Act 2.0 for probably a full hour, so I won't won't bore you guys with any more of that. But yeah, there's a lot of big impacts uh, out there on the Secure Act 2.0. And again, you can head over to the Financial Beat YouTube channel. I have some videos on there I've done on the original Secure Act and the Secure Act 2.0 to give you guys a deeper dive. I think you probably could talk about all of these things for an, an hour. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, so. right? That's all I do all day is talk finances. And uh, unfortunately, my wife typically doesn't want to hear it from me when I get home on, oh, on yeah. you know, different types of investments or trends or any of that stuff. So might as well uh, bring it to you guys right here on the, on the uh, radio show. Get it out on the radio show. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks out there would love to have a conversation with you about their specific situation. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, we're going to tell folks how to get a discovery meeting in just a moment here, but you you can do that in a variety of ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. The best part about us is it's funny because we meet with a lot of our clients we all via Zoom, right? Maybe they don't even come into the office. We do everything over Zoom, and we have clients in many different states, and we're able to operate very efficiently that way. Um, we have a lot of clients that actually do come into the office, right? We have one out in Hemet, California, one out in Redlands. And uh, again, we could do it whatever is more convenient for you via Zoom or, or in person. Or in person. And uh, the best part about our process is it's really just a, a lot of you out there just have so much going on, right? A lot of you guys are maybe going to retire five years from now, and now some of you are retiring this year or next year. And uh, it's one of those things with a lot of the volatile markets going on, with a lot of the potential tax increases going on. There's just, in my opinion, never been a better time uh, to go ahead and make that phone call, come in and get a uh, really kind of just a checkup, we call it, just a second opinion to kind of see where are you at in your retirement plan? Could you be doing anything better? And uh, is there some value we could bring to the table? So if you're one of those people, again, out there, maybe you're 60 years old or 65 years old, and you got, again, $300,000 or maybe $3 million, and you're getting close to retirement and just trying to get a better understanding for if there's someone out there that could help guide you through this next phase of life called retirement, give us a call. That's what the Financial Beat Radio Show is all about, is getting you to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. Please write down that number if you haven't done so already. And better yet, go ahead and call right now. Then you don't have to worry about relying on your memory. And, uh, you know, stop procrastinating. Maybe you've been listening to the show for a long time. It's time to go ahead and give Logan a call. 888-823-PLAN. You can arrange a discovery meeting. Just leave your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back from the good folks at Regary Financial. And you can arrange a convenient time to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, probably via Zoom, or maybe you might want to end up in one of the offices, Hemet or Redlands. It's totally up to you. No charge for this service. Something that Logan Sadler offers to everybody. And no obligation. 888-823-PLAN. The show is all about getting you to and through retirement, and we have more coming up on the other side of this timeout. Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments, and I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. If you want to keep me off your mind, you really need a trusted advisor who will look after your best interests. You also need a custom-designed financial plan that will protect you from market volatility. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, 
I'll send you scrambling through your filing cabinet, hoping you were well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. In Southern California, call Logan Sadler and the Regeri Financial Team at 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. We're back now with more of the Financial Beat. My name is Ryan Stutz. I get the opportunity to hang out with Logan Sadler every week on this radio show. And don't forget that Logan has a variety of uh, uh, podcasts that are available. If you've missed past shows, you'd like to listen, or if you've just tuned in to this show in the middle, you can soon have it as a podcast and check it out there. And he also has his own YouTube channel, uh, Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Check him out on YouTube. A lot of interesting stuff there. The phone number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember it is just use the word plan, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, Logan, we got time for uh, one question that came in uh, this week. It's from Liz in Big Bear. And Liz says, I have whiplash from watching the market for the last few months. What can I invest in that won't be so volatile? Yeah, that's a great question, Liz. And you're probably not alone out there. The people that I've been talking with have been, uh, you know, had some concerns with the volatility, really not even the short term, right? Really the last few years in some cases. And so it's one of those things where it's not a very unnormal question. And I appreciate you writing in. Um, to answer your question, there's a lot of different things you can invest your money, right? I always tell people um, when you're looking at more conservative investments, one of the first few that kind of typically pops up is CDs, money markets, things like, or cash, right? One of the things I always tell people, well, that's more short term. So when you're looking at CDs or money markets, those are great investments for a one year or two year time frame. And the thing, reason why is they don't fluctuate a whole lot, but traditionally speaking, they don't make a whole lot, right? Um, so for a lot of us, that's not a good uh, retirement plan. You shouldn't take all your money typically and move it all into cash and try to wait things out because you don't really know what the market's going to do up or down. Um, more long term, you could look at things like fixed annuities, which have a you know a longer contract, maybe a three year or a five year time frame, and they have a guaranteed rate of return on them. You also have fixed annuity or fixed index annuities that can be a better longer term fit, in my opinion. It can have some good upside potential of the market. They're principal protected, uh, meaning you can't lose any money and uh, due to the market and they have maybe a cash flow on them like a lifetime income they'll pay you like a pension so those could be some other safer alternatives that you could use but one of the biggest things i'd recommend liz is kind of making sure you understand how you're invested really taking a deep dive into you know where are my assets at what type of historical volatility could i experience with how i'm invested and is that risk comfortable with what i'm what or is my risk comfortable with what those investments are in and i think that's a lot more of what i would say rather than just saying hey move your money here and move your money there is really kind of getting an understanding of what your investments look like and if there's any way you could be better situated to maybe potentially lower volatility um, with things like I mentioned or maybe even just getting a better plan put together that way you're not you're you're more comfortable and not as uh, as scared to open your statements or as scared to watch the news to see what the market did that day to making sure again it fits your comfortability and you're and you're comfortable with that for the long run. Logan, I know a lot of people have been listening to the show today, and uh, several of those folks, well, hundreds of those folks have been with us for a long time, but uh, there may be someone out there who is listening for the very first time today. What would you say to them about a discovery meeting? Yeah, the best part about it is if if those of you guys out there that are, again, approaching retirement or maybe just starting retirement, there's so many things that go over, right? And I always say when you look at the – the average retirement plan out there are the people that I meet with that, that maybe believe they have a plan. A lot of them just have investments, right? They really haven't gone over building out that income plan. Most people out there don't have a written income plan to show you a, you know, a 20-year time frame of your retirement, maybe even a 30-year time frame of what your retirement could look like, what type of income can you draw, what types of returns can you potentially get, uh, what types of money would you have left behind as your legacy plan, and what is the tax impact to you and maybe your beneficiaries uh, with how you're currently situated, right? So I think it's important to to know that we provide a lot of value to those of you out there that have came in and went through the process. I've had some clients, Ron, that have came on board. They listen to the show for a year or two before they finally called in. And when they did call in and come in, they go, why did I wait uh, so long, right? I think the more time we have to, number one, get to know each other, introduce you to our firm and our process, but also the more time we have to work on your financial plan before retirement or if you're already in retirement, 
retirement, the quicker we, we might be able to jump on things and correct things, the, uh, you know, the more effective it might be able to make that retirement plan and maybe increase that likelihood of success. So we're a big, broad uh, financial planning firm that looks at many different things out there as far as the uh, retirement plan world goes. And I definitely think we have a lot to val- lots of value to bring to the table to you and your family. So if you're getting close to retirement, I definitely think it's a valuable time to make that phone call, come in. would love to sit down with you at one of my offices or via Zoom. And the best part is we don't pass you off on anybody else. You actually come in and meet with me and get to meet the team. And we can kind of go over what it is you're trying to accomplish, what it is you're looking at in your retirement plan, and what value we could bring to the table. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-7526. And Logan just made a good point. Not only is he at uh, Regary Financial, but an outstanding team of folks there, all ready, willing, and able to help you get to and through retirement. And when you do have a discovery meeting, your conversation will be Logan Sadler. Uh, he will he will be the person you talk to, and he's not going to try to sell you anything or not going to pressure you into doing anything. Come on, it's just a friendly conversation to get to know you, you get to know him, and uh, that's the way it works. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call for Regary Financial in Southern California. Two convenient locations, Hammett and Redlands, 888-823-PLAN can get you in for a discovery meeting. So, hey, get ready. You're going to learn a lot. You'll enjoy your conversation for sure. Hey, I've enjoyed doing this show today, Logan. Yeah, me too. I always, uh, as I say, almost every week, right? Uh, my favorite day of the week here is Radio Week, and hopefully we brought some uh, good information out there to you to, li- to you listeners. And again, we always appreciate the support you guys have been showing over the years to the Financial Beat, and we look forward to being back here next week with another great show. Join us again next time for the next edition of the Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.